Now we're going to look at how to set up your Arduino motors, your rumble motors. So in SimHub, go to Shake It Motors. And then you've got Effects Profile, you've got Motor Output, and you've got Controls. Now we are going to go to Motor Output. Here's where you can select what you want to, uh, to vibrate. Now in this instance, we're going to get Arduino motors and fans. We're going to enable the output. Now I've already done some editing here. So what you can do is this will normally say Channel 1, Channel 2. Just click up here and you can rename it to the brake and the accelerator or what other, other effects you've got. You can also click on the test button. And when you click on the test button, I can feel my brake motor rumbling. I can do the same on the accelerator. And that's working really well. So under the effects profile, this is where we can tune our effects. Now I like to have the gear shift on. I don't really do much with it. I just set the strength. I also like to have a bit of road rumble just for the curbs when I'm going over on the brakes. That's nothing to do with feeling the grip. It's just, I just like that effect. Now the two effects that you will find most useful are the wheels lock and the wheel slip. Now these take a bit of calibration and I'll explain how we do this. So under the mode, you can select the front and the rear. If you have four motors, you can select the corner so that each motor, each corner will give you a bit of feedback onto which wheel is locking. Now, wheel lock is not just on or off. It's a curve or, or it's a percentage. So as the wheel starts to lock up or starts to slow down too fast, this effect here will start to go up. It will be like a little curve. So for example, I've just clicked on test here and you can see that it's spiked all the way up to 100%. Now in the game, this curve will go up and down, up and down, depending on how much your wheel is starting to lock. Now, what I have set is I've set that my lock will appear when I put 10% braking on. Because depending on especially what car you drive, if you are doing heavy turning in an F3 car, even with 10% braking, if you could lock up if you've got enough, if you're trying to put enough turning force through the wheels. Um, I only have two motors, so I have it on front and rear. Now we come to these four outputs, and what do these do? Well, let's reset all the way back to normal, which would be one. The input gain would be 100, and then I'll explain what each one of these does. Right, so. What we have is we have the, what we'll go over first is the minimum force, because the minimum force is probably what you will understand uh, is easiest to explain. So minimum force is literally the minimum amount you want the motors to trigger. So if I set this to zero and it started to rumble, you would probably find that you couldn't feel it at all. So I generally set my minimum force to around four or five percent. And you can see that there is a little spike up in the curve here. I also set my threshold a little bit because I don't want any of this initial bit to be triggered, but I will set that later. Because I like to change the way the curve, the line goes, I don't like it to be straight. So if you, for example, increase the gamma factor, you can actually set up a curve like this, so that initially it doesn't take much of to trigger the effect. And then the effect will start strong and it will gradually get stronger. Now for braking, I like this to go the other way. I like to go all the way down and have it so that it doesn't trigger until quite close to the locking point. But the problem is here, it's only the extreme locking point. Well, if I increase the input gain, you can see that I can have, let's say, the top 90% of the wheel lock to be here. And then from that, that's the wheel lock, and then the input, get it, the gamma factor is too slow there, and then you can have a, a lock off like this. And then the only other thing is I'm going to now increase the threshold a little bit so that we can ignore, let's say, the first um, 50%. So I'll go 60%. So up until 60% wheel lock, it will ignore it. Then the effect will be quite gradual, and the more you lock the brake, the stronger the effect's going to be. So we'll just get that calibrated to something that's quite like, about like that. And that works really well. Now for the wheel slip. Now, I, for some reason I have this set on corners, but it doesn't matter because I'll explain why in a minute. Um, so I have this one set on corners. Now you can see on here that 
I wanted not much uh, vibration on the wheel slip. Now, the, the reason for this is the wheel slip can send an awful lot of, of data through the pedals, but you kind of need to know when the wheels are starting to slip. Now, this is not acceleration slip, so if you put wheel spin in, it doesn't pick it up. This is hot sideways, so as the back end or the front end loses grip and the back end starts to you oversteer or understeer, that is what the wheel slip will pick up on. So what I have is, this is my curve for this. Now, I've set this up pretty much for an F3 car because in F3 there is very little um, slip compared to a normal road car so you can you can tune this curve however you wish so that's how these ver um, variables are, are tuned in now I don't like having the wheel slip tied to the th throttle or the brake you can if you wish for me it doesn't work the only other thing is you've got your input volume volume that's going to send to the motors which you can calibrate here that works really well and up here is your master global input so now we're going to go to the motor output and what you'll see is you'll see the all these off and on and when you scroll down for example I've put a gear shift to only go through the accelerator pedal then I can go down and I can see that the rumble now this is hitting a curb etc this will only go through this will go to the brake and to the accelerator um, oops, and then we'll scroll down. You can see that our wheels lock, the front and the rear on the wheels lock, both go to the brake pedal. And then the wheel slip, I've ignored, for my benefit, the front wheel slip, because I've only got one rumble motor on my accelerator. Um, and most vehicles I drive are rear wheel drive, and that's where I want the information for the wheel slip. So that is my calibration. Now you can see that I've had to turn the, the effect down on the brake a little bit because it's too strong. But there we go. So that's my, my calibration. That's a little tutorial on how to set up things here. And the, it's pretty much the same as well for the, the Shake It bass speakers. Um, the, the variables are the same for the setup on them. So now you understand what these do, you should also ha have a good idea on how they work too.